Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters. I'm your host, Muhammad from Qabr FF, and we are being streamed on three different platforms again, mashallah. Of course, Stream Islam, uh, Qabr FF, of course, which is my channel, and Jordan M. So, alhamdulillah, for those brothers and sisters tuning in, please like and subscribe to all three of these beautiful, amazing channels. Uh, there's so much beneficial con uh, content that is uh, being uh, produced and, and given to you guys. So please, barakallah, uh, click like, hit the icon for notifications. And our beautiful uh, guest right next to me, mashallah, our sheikh, our beloved sheikh, sheikh Nasser is with us once again. He, he's very, very popular, alhamdulillah, uh, within uh, the, the, here in the UK and, and worldwide, mashallah, but especially... Uh, my views on Cover FF and the Brothers on Stream Islam. Uh, mashallah, he's well loved, well liked. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Sheikh Nasser, how are you doing? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, bi khair, barakallah feek. It's nice to see you again and to have you back and to have uh, this blessed project back, alhamdulillah, that we initially started uh, in Corona. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. So may Allah reward the brothers uh, 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 in, in, in Stream Islam for, for their initiative, for pushing us and, and planting this seed. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he makes this seed for them and us. Mm -hmm. A sadaqa jariya in the scale of hasanat it will grow into a big tree that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asluha thabitu wa faruha bizzama tu'ti ukulaha bi'idni rabbiha that its root in the ground and the fruit of it is spreading and sprouting all the way to the heavens. It gives out its fruit. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make these fruits that we reap in the day of judgment for all Amen. of the brothers in stream Islam and Coventry FF. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings. Allahumma I mean, that's beautiful supplication. Barakallah Fiq Sheikh. To be honest, it's always, uh, I'm always delighted to speak to you and see you Alhamdulillah, but maybe hopefully soon, uh, physically, I'll be able to shake your hand and, and hug you because inshallah you'll be back in commentary uh, maybe exactly. after a couple of days. And may Allah bless you and protect you and your Amen. family. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. But going, going straight into the topic, which is a very profound, powerful topic, and it needs to be addressed, brothers and sisters, on a serious note now. Uh, as we know, uh, the situation regarding relationships, it's halal relationships, I'm on about like... Uh, a marriage relationship uh it can be very uh, difficult uh, at this particular time uh and the sheikh will hopefully uh, explain uh, five factors that can ruin a marriage and and those five factors could be happening right now in the situation that we're living in right now in in in, in, in your in your relationship and then the, the remedy the remedy is the five factors to build the marriage so if you're falling into the first five factors there will be a remedy to fix those five factors barakallah feek sheikh sheikh uh, i don't want to take too much of your time please uh, continue with this beautiful topic barakallah feek barakallah feek wa sanaik wa naf'a Allah bik may Allah bless you increase your knowledge and us and all of the muslimin and all of the viewers and the listeners allahumma amin jazakum uh, allah khair for all of the names that we used to see they were regular on uh, towards a happy family podcast uh, mashallah, the, the, the names are familiar to us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to put barakah in them. And may Allah reward you for having good thoughts of us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this an opportunity for you and us to make our families happy. It came in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said that uh, yani, from the factors of sa'ada and happiness, is that a person has a zawjatu a saliha he has a, 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 a righteous wife and this righteous wife can lead to a happy family we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us all happy joyful families that are following the guidance and the example of the messenger alayhi salatu wassalam we start by saying bismillah and we say alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yadhhirahu ala al din kulli wa kafa billahi shahida wa ashhadu an la ilaha illa allah wahdahu la sharika lahu iqraran bihi wa tawhida 
وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا لك الحمد مولانا في كل نعمة ومن جملة النعماء قول لك الحمد فحياكم الله جميعا وبياكم وجعل الله الجنة مثوانا ومثواكم لكم مني التحية والسلام وحبي أيها الشم الكرام سلام يستهل به الكلام ومن أدب المحاضرة السلام حياكم الله على دين الإسلام وعلى سنة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم I greet you all with the greeting of the people of Jannah as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says تحيتهم فيها سلام when the new believers enter Jannah, it will be said to them by the angels, Salamu alaykum. So therefore I say to you, Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And make us, and we ask Allah to make us and you and your parents and your family from the people of Jannah. Allahumma ameen. May Allah alive in you all. And may Allah make your life upon goodness and upon iman. May Allah make our abode Jannatul Firdaus for you and us. The beautiful poet says, there is a greeting from me to you, which is Assalamu Alaikum. My beloved brothers and sisters in Iman. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this salam that we should start every reminder and every conversation with, which is a sunnah and a guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu and it's a manner of conversation. May Allah make this dua, which is when you say Assalamu Alaikum, may peace and blessing of Allah be upon you. May Allah make this dua a reality for you and us, Allahumma Ameen. May Allah alive in you upon the religion of Islam. And may Allah keep us and you upon the guidance of the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alayhi wasallam. Ahibbati fillah. My dear respected brothers and sisters, before I start, there is a duty for every Muslim, whilst we are speaking about family, that we start with our own families. My grandma from my father's side uh, is very ill, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give her shifa and all of our grandparents and parents. So it is our duty and my duty that I request from all the honorable brothers and sisters to make dua for her and to remember her in your duas that you make for a, a believer that you don't know. And it came from what is amazing amongst the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that if you make dua بِظَهْرِ الْغَيْبِ behind a person's back without knowing him and without you knowing him or even if you know him without him knowing that you made the dua for him there is an angel saying to you and for you the same the same dua that you made for that person may Allah give it to you yani imagine you as a sinful believer subhanallah making dua for another believer Imagine who is making the dua for you, an angel. And this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why some of the scholars mention that from the greatest duas that a person can keep regular to say, like what the Prophet used to say, Allahumma aghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. May Allah forgive the Muslim men and women the believing men and women, those who are alive and those who have passed away. You have included everybody from the believers, subhanAllah. And imagine you have made dua for all of the believers and all of the Muslimin and the angels saying to you, mithluha, and for you the same. Imagine for every dua that you made for a believer, the same dua will be given to you. And this is from Jawami al Khair the comprehensiveness and the blessing opportunities where there is some action in Islam is small, but the reward for it is magnificent. And uh, subhanAllah, I think from the last time we spoke, my grandma from my mother's side have passed away. 
who has affected me a lot. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon her and all of the Muslimin. She was the one with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after his guidance and after his will, that was a reason for us to go through this field of seeking knowledge. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our shortcomings and make us upon the straight path and the haqq and the sunnah until we die, Allahumma ameen. I actually grew up with my grandma. I didn't grow up with my mom because my mom was a doctor and she was very busy in the hospital. And uh, she was head of the pediatric ward uh, and, and, and birth. Uh, subhanallah her time was very very busy and she had her own as well GP in Libya so once growing up I grew up with my grandma yani from the funny things I always mention to my dear brother and Auda Abu Shuaib Ashraf may Allah bless him is that uh, yani my mother was not even allowed to hit me because technically I was the same yani as, as, as her because I the one who nurtured me and looked after me and everything was my grandma. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy upon her and for her tarbiyah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who the Prophet sallallahu said about them that uh, when a son of Adam passes away, his actions cut off except from three. One of them is waladun salih yad'u a righteous son or a descendant. That makes dua for them. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive her and to have mercy upon her and all of our parents and grandparents, Allahumma ameen. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give shifa to my other grandma, Allahumma ameen, and all our grandparents, Allahumma ameen. And this is a humble request that I wanted to start with. Yani, as they say, if it wasn't for the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we won't be here because of these role models that helped us and aided us and shaped us after the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be in this path. So it is our duty to remember them wherever we have a chance to remember them by. And always I advise you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, that if Allah blessed you with parents, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with grandparents, take the advantage to make silatul rahim for them. It came in an amazing hadith, من أراد أن ينسى له في 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 رزقه ويطال له في عمره whoever wants his risk to be expanded and increased and his age to be prolonged فليصل رحمه let him connect his kinship let him tie the relationship of the kin his family and your family, that uh, those who are close to you, your parents and your grandparents, have more dutiful right towards you than anybody else from your other uh, uh, relatives, even though they have a right as well in regards to communication, like your aunties and your, 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 your paternal and your maternal aunties, and then after that, your cousin, and then after that, yani, whoever comes close from the family, make sure yani, in the time that we're in, subhanAllah, sudden deaths, are happening, yani a person, a moment is healthy, you find him, subhanAllah, at his peak of his health, and in the, the moment they give you a call and they say he has passed away, take advantage in these moments and make sure that you always, from those who please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in regards to that. And this is the core of our topic and our podcast, towards a happy family. If you want to be happy in your life, make sure you have these kins and ties connected, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to aid us and to guide us, Allahumma ameen. We have for you, my dear respected brothers and sisters, a very important topic, which is the five factors to ruin a marriage and five factors to build a marriage. And the factors are many. I just summarized what came in my head and what I've seen and what I've read, yani, briefly. Uh, I, was, I was slightly busy. Uh, uh, with the issue of my grandma. So I said, let me accumulate and collect and look at some of the points that some of the scholars mentioned and some of the counselors mentioned when, and from uh, personal and experience in the field of da'wah, in the field of uh, family counseling and so on. Uh, uh, what are some of the factors 
And sometimes yeah, and the small numbers are easy to digest. If I brought yeah, 20, which is what I have written down, nobody will be with us uh, for, for about two, three hours long podcast. So we said let's summarize them to five and then each episode, inshallah, in the future, will bring other five, bring other five, bismillah, so we can make it easy to digest and to continue. And our topic, as I said, five factors to ruin marriage. There are so many things to ruin marriage. This is an uh, uh, example. There is no wrong or right answer. Don't say, oh, the sheikh said this. Or the, yani, correct me if I said the hadith wrong. Correct me if I said the ayah wrong. But don't come and say, for example, ah, oh, this point is wrong. I don't think. Ah, oh, this is experiences. Yani, the Muslims have experiences in regards to this. The non-Muslim counselors, they have experience in regards to this. Yani, this is what uh, the ulama sometimes do, like uh, the likes of the great scholar, the mufassir of our time, the teacher of Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, the scholar of our time. Sheikh Al-Imam Abdurrahman Ibn Nasir al-Sa'di, who has the greatest tafsir, summarized tafsir, tafsir of Sa'di, which has been translated into English, alhamdulillah, and I advise every Muslim to purchase it. Uh, as there's no excuse for a person to say, I do not understand the meaning of the Qur'an and the uh, explanation of the Qur'an. Uh, Shaykh al-Sa'di rahimahullah ta'ala wrote a beautiful book and it's one of my favorite. And it's actually one of the reasons I went into the field of family counseling and psychology. It was the book Al-Wasail al-Mufida lil Hayat al-Sa'idah. Uh, how to achieve happiness or means and ways of achieving happiness. And the Sheikh wrote this book whilst he was going for an illness checkup in Lebanon. Uh, uh, he went from Saudi Arabia with his son to Lebanon because at that time, Lebanon was, as they call it, the New York of the Arab world. It was very posh and he had uh, advanced medicine and so on. It was like London. It was like UK something along those lines where I had good quality medical care. So the Sheikh went from Saudi Arabia to Lebanon and whilst he was waiting in the waiting room of the hospital, uh, uh, he seen a book by De Dale Crange, one of the authors that are specialists in uh, motivational speaking and counseling and uh, psychology. And uh, the, the, the book was something to do Yani of how to achieve happiness as well. Yani was called, I think, uh, leave worry and start life, something along those lines. And uh, uh, he started the, 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 by, by reading this book in Arabic, because it was translated in Arabic. And Dale Cringe, I think, uh, the American writer, very famous American writer. So the sheikh looked at the book and he benefited benef points from the book and he said okay this is a nice book but it's missing one thing it's missing the quran the, the key factor of happiness is missing the sunnah so he took some of the points and he changed the book and he asked his son to go to the market and to bring him paper and pen uh, or, or and pencil and he said to uh, said to him go and bring it from the market when he brought it the sheikh had right there and then started writing 20 points in some uh, uh, manuscripts, 22, uh, uh, 20 or 20 points in regards to how to achieve happiness, means and ways. And each of them is supported by the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. So he returned everything back to the Quran and the Sunnah, even though some of them were habits, yani everyday habits, but he attached them to the Quran and the Sunnah because the Muslim's life, all of it is revolving around the aspect of ibadah, revolving around his Lord. And if a person is close to his creator in every aspect, then he will be successful. He will be happy. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا مِنْ ذَكَرٍ أَوْ أُنْثَى وَهُوَ مُؤْمِنٍ فَلَنُحِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Whoever this good deed, factor number one or key number one, condition number one of happiness, good deeds, righteous deeds, Male or female, wahua mu'min, he has iman and tawheed. Condition number two, in regards to happiness, fala nuhiyannahu hayatan tayyiba, the promise from Allah says, we will make him live a joyful, happy life. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that life, Allahumma ameen. Yani, back to the point that we started, uh, uh, is that 
uh, uh, once a person يعني, benefits from the Muslims and the non-Muslims, there are sometimes in regards to marriage experience, we could benefit a lot and, 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 and bring it in and look and uh, check it next to the checkbook, uh, checks, uh, checkbooks of Islam to see if it is according to our sunnah, according to the sunnah of our messenger, according to our deen. And this is how we can benefit from it a lot. Uh, uh, the foundation of the topic that we want to understand is the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rum, after A'udhu Billahi Min al rajim وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ And from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he created for you from your own selves as wajan partners لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا so that you can feel at home within them so you can be close to them so you can feel secure when you have the relationship with them and he made between you the actual love in all of its level and rahma mercy so there has to be these two important factors as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the quran in fi surely in these examples and in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, that there is reminders for those who uh, uh, remember and from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the signs of his lordship subhanahu wa ta'ala he's the only creator and this is يعني, admittance of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his lordship. He's the only one who created subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this, even the kuffar of Quraysh admitted this, my dear respected brothers and sisters. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ And if you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, they would say, who? Allah, who are they? The mushrikeen of Quraysh. Subhanallah, they knew who is the creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you from his signs and from his uh, power subhanahu wa ta'ala and his ability subhanahu wa ta'ala that nobody can match in regards to creation. That خَلَقَ لَكُمْ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا He created for you uh, mates. Uh, 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 partners from your own uh, uh, from your own يعني, type of creation meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't create uh, us partners from a different creation either be angels or zins or anything like that that we do not feel يعني, close to rather uh, subhanallah they are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it from us, from Adam, from the rib of Adam, he created Hawa alayha as salam And litaskunu uh, ilayha. The reason and the, con the, the conclusion behind this is so uh, uh, that you can find peace, that you can find solace, you can find ease, you can find uh, happiness when, uh, when, when you... Uh, uh, stay with them and the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used يعني, uh, uh, he used the word sakan sakan يعني, sukun, uh, uh, from يعني, calmness from uh, uh, the word that is used also for home so you can find a home with them you can find in your wife a home uh, in your wife you can find in your husband a home in your husband like as if he is gathering you and, and, and hugging you and protecting you with everything. And the same for the wife. Look at Khadija radiallahu anha when the Prophet sallam, the, 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 the wahi came to him and he scared and he was like, Zammiluni, Zammiluni, Dathiruni, Dathiruni, cover me, cover me, shroud me. And, and, and he came to who? 
to 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 the to the arms of Khadija radiallahu anha to the care of Khadija he felt so secure that he can come to Khadija radiallahu anha and with her wisdom Khadija the mother of the believers she looked after the prophet sallallahu and she calmed him down this is true happiness that we can find allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-a'raf to support this point huwa alladhi khalaqa huwa alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida وَجَعَلَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا لِيَسْكُنَ إِلَيْهَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who created you from a single soul, meaning Adam. And from it, he created its mate, meaning Hawa, so that you can find the home and peace and, and, and a place to return from. Subhanallah. Uh, once we understand this, once we understand that the wife is the home for the husband in every aspect, even in his uh, desire. Subhanallah. Because y- yani a home is something that you go and you seclude yourself in and you, and, and, and you hide yourself in, in, in every aspect. Yani there is the emotional aspect, there is the physical aspect, there is the also the desire aspect. That is the desire aspect. Yani, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a partner that we can feel at home with and we can return to? Because we have desires. This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us. The Prophet sallallahu said in a beautiful hadith authenticated by Imam al-Albani, he said, إِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ تُقْبِلُ فِي سُورَةِ شَيْطَانِ وَتَدْبِرُ فِي سُورَةِ شَيْطَانِ فَإِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكُمْ إِمْرَأَةً أَعْجَبَتْهُ فَلْيَأْتِي أَهْلَهَا That the woman, uh, 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 when she goes past and she walks in front of you, she, you see her, she comes in a form of shaitan and she goes in a form of shaitan, meaning she's a distraction. She's a distraction. And that's why we were advised to make غض البصر uh, 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 to, to conceal our eyes and, and our heart and fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, we are given permission, the first look, and you don't make an excuse huh, to, 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 to become FBI with CCTV camera eyes, and you're looking, uh, this is the first time, and that first time you don't move your eyes, it will be one hour, and you're looking until your neck, uh, so la la la, until you become like an owl, uh, 360 degrees, la la la, this is not the, the, the understanding of the hadith or the reality. Yeah, and if a person, a woman walked past and the shaitan and the weakness, the ulama said in regards to the meanness, خُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا And the insan, the human male specifically, is created weak. يعني, like, اللهم بارك, may Allah bless him and give him good health uh, and, 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 and energy and, and prolong his life upon khair and goodness. Uh, our dear brother, Sheikh uh, uh, Abu Shu'aib, Allah blessed him with energy, mashallah. Maybe he can bench me even though I'm oh, maybe overweight. C- c- consider it to what my doctor said, subhanAllah. Uh, and, and, and imagine, subhanAllah, uh, uh, you, you, somebody comes to me and he say, I know our dear brother Ashraf. He's a professional, mashallah. He's certified boxer, certified this, and a pro- professional trainer. And you come and tell me Ashraf is not uh, strong. How could you say this? He's weak. Lala, we're saying weak in a human me. Nasr, weak. Is that when a woman goes past? I cannot control. This is the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and a human. Because the desires and the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that's why we, we, we are given a portion of forgiveness. That first look is from يعني, uh, a look of shaitan that you are forgiven because you can't control. And the second look, uh, 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 that's the one you are accountable because now you can control yourself. The first one could be by mistake. The first one could be by weakness. The first one be, be by accident. But the second one is your on purpose. So يعني, uh, 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 you have to be careful and this is when you're going to be accountable. Uh, so... What, uh, the human is created weak in regards to that sense. So the Prophet وسلم, is telling us, when the woman goes past and walks, and that's why the woman might be an expected sister, listen to me carefully as your older brother. A nasiha, nasiha to mushfiq. 
a, 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 an advice of somebody, Wallah, he wants the khair for you because I want the khair for my own family and I want it for you. Be careful of how you wear. Be careful not to leave the house with perfume. Be careful not to leave the house with heels because all of this is haram. Allah mentioned it in the Quran. Allah tells the, tells the wives of the prophets and the daughters of the prophet and also the believing women that they conceal themselves and they put a jilbab, a proper covering over their body. Also, that they do not may walk on earth with something that makes noise. Like, for example, do you know the shangles or the, the, the bracelets that uh, yani were worn at the time of Jahili and back in the day that they would walk uh, 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 and, and it would make noise to notice the men that a woman is walking. That's not allowed. What's the equivalent of those bracelets now? Uh, the heels. Allah, big fitna. Shaitan himself is, is the, probably the one who's behind that idea. So when she walks, all you hear is talk, talk, knock, 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 knock. It makes noise. It gives you alertness that a woman is walking. So you have to be very careful, my dear respected sister. Subhanallah, this is attraction. And that is something that you are counting. How about the perfume? Subhanallah. Them, them Dior and Chanel and them big companies, mashallah, ah, French perfume companies and all of the other, they, they, they make big business behind you, sister. You want to perfume yourself inside your house, Allah mabarak. You can buy a whole truck full of perfume and you can pour it over yourself inside your house. Nobody's going to say anything, alhamdulillah. Amongst the gathering of sisters only, nobody's going to say anything, alhamdulillah. This is what is permissible for you to do. But you go outside with perfume, subhanAllah, that will make the next twist and it will make the eyes roll up and down because you're walking past. This is not permissible, subhanAllah. In the hadith, it came that you will be classified as azaniya. We We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Because from the severity, you're trying to attract, even though all oh, the, the many yani, uh, new movement now, how could you say this, Sheikh? What are you talking about, brother? How could you say, uh, uh, no, I want to keep myself clean. Okay, nobody said, mashallah, don't have a shower. Nobody said, put a clo new clothes on. But we're saying to you, don't put perfume that will attract the, the sound. Don't put anything that makes the smell uh, apparent and obvious. Put na natural odors if you know you're going outside the house. Inside the house is between you and yourself, no problem. But when you're going outside, be careful. This is something that you will be accountable for. And therefore, it is a very important that for the sisters that they fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and don't go on any wave, any emotion that is coming. They say, oh, they have, oh, no, we have the right. I want to put perfume for myself. I want to put makeup outside the house for myself. No. Subhanallah, you will find her in the house. Ghost. Wallahi ghost, uh, subhanAllah, scary. Huh? She, she's wearing bad pajamas and she's wearing this and she, uh, ripped clothes. But when she's going outside, all of the decoration that shaitan thinks of and the people of the past and the people of the future has ever thought, she thinks about it when she's going outside. You want to decorate for yourself, for your own emotional support, for your own uh, perfection. Do it inside the house when you can see yourself in the mirror. No problem. Do, do beautify for your own self. Yani beauty sometimes is not only for the husband. It's, it's, it's for the husband and for you to make your, your confidence better. But don't do it outside because who's going to look out you, out, outside for you, uh, 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 outside at you when, when you're walking in the street? The people, the strangers, the men that are not mahram, they are not allowed to look at you. But you are causing that fitna to happen. Yani don't expect and don't say, oh, no, they shouldn't look. Yani don't, don't, don't if think if I'm going to bring a chicken to a lion in his wilderness and put it down, I'm going to say to him, mashallah, good lion, sit down, calm down. Don't. He's going to eat me and the chickens. <laughs> he doesn't care. Because that's the reality. And therefore, the sisters that are getting raped, the sisters that are getting abused, the sisters that are getting uh, uh, assaulted, but, but verbally and, and, and this and this and, and uh, physically, uh, why? Because sometimes they have a hand and a factor. We're not talking about the, the ones that happen for no reason. We're talking about the ones that she is involved. 
she is involved in what is happening to her. So my dear respected sister, cover yourself. My dear respected sister, fear for yourself. And when you go outside, my question to you is that imagine if angel of death came and took your soul at that moment whilst you're outside. Will you be happy? Will you be happy to meet the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment when you're resurrected in the state that you're in? In a state of makeup? In a state of listening to music? Maybe you have headphones outside? In a state of uh, having too much tabarruj and ex extravagant decorations? Uh, in, in, in a state of having perfume when you're not meant to have perfume outside, subhanAllah? Uh, with heels uh, that, that, that uh, uh, a sister should not be wearing outside. All of this, uh, make it a reminder for yourself. And this is a nasiha uh, for you, my dear respected br uh, sister. And dear brothers, your wife, your daughter, your sister, your mother, don't be a, a, a one that subhanAllah doesn't speak. Yeah, let her do what. No, she doesn't do what. You, you, you are the man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in charge. Al-rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa The men are responsible over the women in very various aspects of their life. So they do not get attacked. So they do, do, do not get laughed at. So they do not get abused. So they do not lead themselves to the hellfire. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Hu anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. Protect yourself and your family. Hellfire. The fuel of it is stone and people. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. The hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if a woman comes, she comes in the form of shaitan. فَإِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكُمْ If فَإِذَا رَأَى أَحَدُكُمْ إِمْرَأَةٌ If one of you sees a woman that he likes or, 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 or he thinks she's interesting or, or, or something like that, the Prophet ﷺ gave you uh, guidance and key towards dealing with that situation. And this is my answer to the question that many people ask. If I see a sister in the street, if I see a sister, uh, the, the, the brothers who are in university, if I see a sister in university, if I see a sister in my job, in my work, what shall I do? The Prophet ﷺ said, فَلْيَأْتِي أَهْلَهِ let him speak to his family and let him speak to her family so they can make the situation halal from the get-go. Not they go and he says to her, let's go to Starbucks, let me have your phone number. He has her phone number and he has his Snapchat and he has her Instagram and he's texting her and he wants to be the first one who says to her good night and he wants to be the first one to say to her good morning. Uh -huh. so, and he wants to be the first one uh, when it hits 12 o'clock midnight to say happy birthday to you, subhanAllah. And in Valentine's Day, mashallah, his bank account is screaming, don't, don't do this. And he's buying the flowers and the teddy bears and the chocolate and he's taking her to the restaurant, subhanAllah. A relationship like this, what is it going to lead to? What's it going to lead to? Is it going to lead to khair? Is it going to lead to goodness? Is it going to lead to righteousness? It came in the hadith, what is started upon misguidance or what is started upon haram will lead to haram and it will be haram. There will be no barakah in it, subhanAllah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. The Prophet sallallahu then after that said, فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ يَرُدُّ مَا فِي نَفْسِهِ SubhanAllah, that will push away what the person has from lusts and desires. Once you call her family, once you call your family and sort it out the halal way, not the uh, romantic uh, Hollywood way, uh -huh. la, la, la. the halal way, the sunnah way, you go speak to her family, you speak to your family, so they sort it out. It will push away what he has from the desires because now he has a home to go to. He has a wife to go to that will protect him and he can put his halal desires Subhanallah, my dear respected brothers and sisters, it came in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet said that, uh, uh, and even if one of you put his desires in halal, falahu ajr. You will get reward for making halal relationship, for having relation with one's wife in a halal means, in a halal way. You get rewarded. It's ibadah. And you get ajr for it, subhanallah.
Because imagine the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, uh, 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 if he puts it in haram, if he puts his list and desires in haram, doesn't he get a sin? Yes. So therefore, if he puts it in halal, he will get ajab. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, and he, look, this deen, this beauty is so open. Don't let them come to you and say to you, we are extreme. They don't give you this. They don't do this to you. They don't, they, 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 there is no halal, halal stuff. No, look, even our relations, subhanAllah, with our own wives, that enjoyment, subhanAllah, that natural lust and desires, we are rewarded for it, subhanAllah. We are rewarded for it if we do it upon a halal means. This is khair. This is mercy. This is guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the al-hanifiyyat samha the beautiful, perfect, straightforward religion that the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam came with. My dear respected brothers and sisters, from the first of the five factors that it will ruin a marriage and a person has to be careful from the husband and wife is بدء الحوار بين أي الزوجين بالاحتقار وتحقير الطرف الآخر. Starting the relationship or the conversation actually in a relationship between the husband and wife with belittling the other uh, 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 side. Either the wife belittles her husband or the husband belittles his wife. This is one of the biggest dangerous shaitan infused factors, subhanAllah. It's like bukhur, incense. Do you know that burning stick? Once you start it small and you burn it, it burns the whole thing, subhanAllah. If we don't deal with it and stop it from the beginning, it can catch fire and, and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can protect us from the after effect. Be careful. This, uh, the, the, and this is seen a lot, yani, even by a joke, because people sometimes take things personal. Be careful of what you say. Don't belittle the other one. Yani, uh, remember the key guidance to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu the perp the pers purpose and the reason and the, yani, the conclusion of his khutbah to the wada'ah. The final sermon and the final speech. What did he say? لا فضل على عربي ولا أعجمي إلا بالتقوى والعمل الصالح. There is no difference in regards to statuses or anything like that between a white man or red man, red, يعني عرب, non-Arab. We say male or female. We say husband and wife from the understanding as one. Uh, except تقوى. And amalun salih. These are the differentiating aspect. Taqwa fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what is going to put people in level. And uh, also amalun salih, righteous deeds. Other than that, do not belittle a person. Even if you're richer than him, even if the husband is richer than the wife, do not belittle her because of that. If the wife richer than the husband, do not belittle him. I'm the one who's paying your money. I'm the one who's paying rent. And la, 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 dear sister, calm down. Don't use it even in the moment of anger because shaitan, subhanallah, is uh, from the ones who uses these uh, uh, points to wedge and put in a gap between the husband and the wife. Okay, this belittling could be even by body language. Uh -huh. Be careful, my dear respected brothers and sisters. Body language is important because a husband will understand the body language of the wife because of their relationship together, and the wife will understand the body language of her husband. Yani many, many will understand because you, you, yani you had a long time with her. You have uh, lifetime with her, as they say. So you know how she reacts and you know when she's happy, you know when she's sad. And this is yani, was found in the hadith and the, the example of the Prophet Sallallahu when he said to Aisha, Oh Aisha, I know when you are happy with me and I know when you're angry with me. Aisha is surprised. She's also happy because her husband knows her character. He knows everything about her. And he said, he, she said to him, how? He said to her, when you're happy with me, you, uh, you say, uh, uh, and you swear by saying, Warabbi Muhammad, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. 
And if you're angry with me, you say, La wa Rabbi Ibrahim. I swear by the Lord of Prophet Ibrahim. They are, they, they, it's the same Lord, <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yani, she, because she's uh, angry with him, she used another Prophet. It, it, it touched something in the heart of the Prophet as, as a wise wife. Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother of the believer. May Allah be pleased with her and her family and her father. Allahumma ameen. Uh, uh, she noticed that this is something that puts something in the heart of the Prophet. So she said to him, from this day onwards, I will never mention Ibrahim. I will only say, I swear by the Lord of Muhammad. She knew her husband's character and he knew his wife's character. May Allah be pleased with him. May Allah be pleased with her. And may Allah send his peace and salutation upon our messenger, Muhammad sallallahu And look how he dealt with the situation. He had something to tell her. He didn't come and confront her directly and say to her, hey, 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 you always have a bad character. You, no, 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 with wisdom, with hikmah, in an indirect way. He said to her, do you know what? I know, I, know, I know when you're happy and I know when you're... Do this to your wife. Go. If you know, my dear, that this is a challenge now for, for the married brothers, for the, the non-married brothers and sisters. Man, it'll make it easy for you. Practice. This is... Uh, practice makes perfect from now. But for the one, mashallah, who, who are married, uh, mashallah, depending on how long you're married now, you will understand the, the character of your wife. So do this and practice this and say to your wife, I know when you're happy and I know when you're sad. And bring her, if something makes her happy, bring her that thing as a gift. You will find, subhanAllah, the relationship, love me, ta, mashallah, is off to the roof. And this is what is needed, my dear respected brothers and sisters. So make sure the body language is very important. Some scientists in regards to body language and speech therapy, they said 96% uh in the, the, the of people in the first 15 minutes of the conversation they know if the conversation is going to be good or not good and they know if the conversation is going to have a good ending or not yani, the, 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 the moment how you start a conversation how you begin even if it's an argument make sure that you have valid points make sure there is no attacking there is no belittling yani, you bring in some important factors that will help you and assist you in making the relationship even when you're angry with each other you want to solve the relationship before breaking uh, the relationship and making it worse number two uh, 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 always mentioning the bad never mentioning the good always mentioning the bad never mentioning the good uh, 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 this 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 one uh, what what they call in English yani, um, uh, uh, never mentioning anything good about your wife. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu gives us understanding. He says, لا يفرق مؤمن مؤمنة إن كريها منها خلق أعجبه منها خلق آخر. The, 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 the believe in men and women when they're married, they shouldn't kind of go head and head like uh, chickens together, fighting all the time. Uh, uh, if he dislikes her character, there must be another character that he likes in her. Always find the good. Don't look for the bad. Even if the good is yani, little, make sure the good is the one that flourishes and speak about the good. Never mention the bad and never always yani, mention the, 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 the negativity. Don't always be negative. Don't say, oh, you never do this for me. You never do that. And this is a character in a woman. Yani, it came in the hadith of the Prophet that if he did all of his life good thing, after he makes one mistake, the woman will only focus on the mistake. And she forget, forgets all of the good that he has done. So, so don't be from the one who's always, oh, you don't speak to me. You haven't spoken to me today. Oh, you the 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 the, the w w when he's coming from work and he's tired. Oh, you didn't uh, say this. Oh, you, uh, understand each other and don't always say. Oh, you always ignoring me. Oh, you always nah. Uh, try to understand each other and look for the loopholes that you can not not that are strong and help you become stronger. Uh, uh, number three is. Uh, 
don't always be from the ones that are يعني, in defense mode. Don't be from the ones that are always in defense mode. Why? When you're always in defense mode with your husband or when the husband, let's say, in defense mode with his wife, you're not opening the understanding of the ayah and the hadith لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you can feel at home and ease within them, your partner. Your partner is the home that you can feel secure because if you're always at defense and keeping an arm's length, as they say, away, you're not going to be... Uh, or, or, don't make barriers between you and your husband. They always, women, sometimes make uh, fortresses between them and their husband so she doesn't have her heart broken. And the same sometimes for the men. No, don't do that because let's say a problem happened and you put that barrier up or you defend yourself, you're trying to say to the other person that is wrong. You're, you're trying to send a wrong message to that person. So try to be careful when uh, uh, you, you uh, are dealing with your wife or dealing with your husband, uh, that you do not put up these barriers and you do not, for example, always say, it's your mistake, it's your problem, it's this. No, don't put that barrier up. Uh, number four, uh, negligence. Don't be from those who neglect, ne neglect uh, uh, the, the husband or the wife. And many, many brothers, he, 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 you will find him, mashallah, he, he, he is uh, uh, the most famous brother in the community. But when you look in his house, subhanallah, he doesn't talk to his wife. He thinks that he's uh, yani, uh, 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 the lion of the house in a sense that yani, nobody should speak when he comes inside the house. Everybody respects him, everybody. And in, in a wrong way. لا 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 look at our Prophet look at Umar ibn Khattab Umar Khattab used to play with his kids and a man came to him when he was in charge a man came to him that he put him in charge of one of the cities he found him lying on his back he found Umar ibn Khattab lying on his back playing with one of his kids like a father does so that man said to Umar Khattab I never do this, what's this? and he belittled him he's like no 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 that's not character of a man inside his heart you have to be stern Umar ibn Khattab Cancelled him from his duty. He said, no, 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 you can't be a mayor of that city. No, no, no. If you are not mercy, merciful with your own family, how could you be merciful to the people that I put you in charge? Look at the wisdom and the hikmah. Be gentle. Don't be يعني, negligent in regards to what's going on. And, 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 and be alert in regards to what's happening inside your house for your own wife and for your own family. So you know what is going on in, in with your wife as well, when she's sad, when she's not sad, when you need to bring her chocolates and flowers, when, when you need to make her happy, when you need to take her. Ask, be a, a, a husband that is alert, not a husband that is negligent. Uh, uh, also, from uh, the, the, the mistakes as well, and, and that's the final one for today, from the mistakes that the people make in regards to uh, uh, يعني, that, that ruin a marriage when it comes things that are physical, either be it raising the voice, either be it uh, hitting, either be it throwing things. And this is something that you will have to be careful of. And, 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 and obviously, sometimes uh, uh, trying to attack and being the attacker. We said, don't be defender, but also don't be the attacker now. We said, don't put the, be, be the one who's in defense. But at the same time, be in the middle. umuri The best is always medium in the deal. And the same in this. Don't be in defense mode all the time. And don't be in attack mode. This attack mode, shouting, screaming, or you igniting the problem. Or if you are a man, divorce me. This is a problem that I've just been dealing with now. There is a, uh, subhanallah, uh, uh, case that I'm dealing with now. Yani, the, the, they, they had a fight. They had a fight in regards to what's good. Uh, 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 in regards to yani, uh, husband and wife stuff. And the sister, may Allah forgive her and us, she said to the husband, if you are, uh, uh, if you are a man, 
divorce me. Allah Akbar. That, that this is very bad. They don't say to a man if you are a man because you are setting you up for failure, setting yourself up for failure, and you're setting yourself up for divorce. Wallahi, that sister, she's regretting it because the, the brother is clever in this sense. I mean, this is a, a, a rare case from the, what, what usually happens. This brother became patient and he walked out the house. He didn't say anything. He noticed that, that, that something and he left. So imagine in that moment if shaitan came to him and whispered to him and, 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 and khalas, he gave her divorce. They're going to be in a different story. now. But that brother now is sad. He's not happy. He left and he's living in his family's house. And that sister now is all alone by herself. And, and we're trying to rectify the situation to the best. But it is heavy. You're speaking about a man's yani, uh, reputation, a man's uh, manhood, a man's everything, the character about a man. You can't say to a man, if you're a man, you And the same with the wife. You can't come and say something that's very rude like, like that to the wife, that subhanallah, na'am, uh, jazakallah khair. It is worse when it's done in front of the children. Ah, the fighting, the abuse, the attack is worse because the children will hate you. The children will, 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 will become tormented because of you. They will have bad character because of, they will be the ones who will hate their wives and their children in the future because of you. And remember the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu in regards to starting a bad action. Whoever starts a sunnah, he's going to get an, uh, the, either the reward for it uh, for and for everybody that doesn't, or he's gonna get the sin for it, and for everybody that doesn't. So when it comes to verbal, physical, yeah, I mean, this should never even exist in a marriage. This should never exist, and 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 and, and it is condemned in Islam in all its form. Anas ibn Malik, subhanallah, the servant of the Prophet sallam, the one who knows what is going on, eh, 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 second by second, in the life of the Prophet sallam, inside the house, he said, uh, uh, with, the, with the agreement of Aisha, he said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, said, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, or, or she said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Anas ibn Malik, he said that he never hit a servant or, or somebody uh, at all. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never raised his hand, never hit anybody, never shouted at anybody, only in the way of haqq, the only raising of anything, he will raise the sword when he's fighting in a battle. Other than that, you will never see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said he never hit a slave or he never hit uh, 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 his wife or any of his children. Rather, imagine the deen is so merciful, subhanAllah. The Prophet Sallallahu would stop a khutbah jum'ah, khutbah tul jum'ah. He would stop and go down the mimbar to pick up Al-Hasan and Hussein when he's seen them, uh, yani walking, kids walking. He would lengthen the sujood to extend people thought that something happened to the Prophet Sallallahu because he wants to let the children play on his back and have relaxation and use him as a riding beast, alayhi salatu wasalam, because he doesn't want to finish their playing time. In the farad salah, not sunnah, we're not in the farad salah. The Prophet ﷺ would pick up Zainab and, um, and, 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 and his grandchildren and his, his, in, in the middle of Salah whilst they're crying. This is the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ. My dear respected brother and sister, this is the sunnah. This is the guidance that we need. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who understand these dangerous uh, factors that could ruin the marriage and protect us from them. And inshallah, in another meeting, we will speak about five important factors that will uh, 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 support and build the marriage. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for assistance and guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all marriage strong and happy. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khair. If there's any questions or anything like that. MashaAllah. That is uh, one of the best dreams I've ever actually heard from you. Uh, hosted uh, and a uh, big shout out to our beautiful brothers from Stream Islam and uh, our beautiful brother Jordan M who I actually met a couple of weeks ago at Speaker's Corner and also to my viewers of Kava Fef for all your generous donations uh, it's just amazing uh, Barakallah uh, to all those brothers and sisters who have donated 
again myself i've donated also so let's encourage each other in this type of uh, activities uh but inshallah if there is any uh questions or comments uh you know please uh put them forward uh, and inshallah they will be highlighted and then put forward to the sheikh uh, we, we have a new service as well if anybody wants to call in live inshallah and uh, uh, they got a question or they want to add something or if uh, they want to correct a, a point they want to discuss a point please uh, come in into the studio and uh, join us alhamdulillah we'll be honored to to have you yeah, I've just pinned it on my channel also. Uh, so there is some questions uh, in the chat. So, Sheikh, uh, before we, uh, inshallah, get some people on backstage, and then uh, if you want to deal with these questions, inshallah. Can you see the question, Sheikh? Yeah. Uh, suspicion and jealousy oh. should be avoided altogether. However, it is the case of the sisters there excessive on both. To what extent should this be anticipated or tolerated? Uh, good question. My answer to you, Akhi Mahdi, is the example of what happened in the gathering of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Aisha one day, she had the honor of hosting the Prophet ﷺ for dinner and his uh, companions. And uh, another wife of the Prophet ﷺ, I think Zainab, she sent uh, one of her servants with food in the presence of the Sahab. Aisha heard about this and she came out and she broke the plate of food in that was in the hand of who, uh, the servant that came with the food. In front of the Prophet ﷺ, in front of the Sahaba, the reaction of somebody in our time is going to be serious. Divorce <laughs> and, 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 and shouting and screaming and how dare you and this and that, who do you think you are? And swearing, <laughs> subhanAllah. We ask Allah forgiveness. But the guidance of the Prophet ﷺ, how did he deal with it? Did he shout? Did he scream? Did he uh, uh, do anything to show anger? No. He understood that this is natural instinct in a woman. Jealousy. Ghayra. That is natural in a woman. He said, Gharat ummukum. He said to the Sahaba, your mother, meaning the mother of the believers, Aisha, she became jealous and he smiled and he laughed and he helped her clean the mess. He's not the one who broke it. She should be doing it in the mentality of our time. But the Prophet Sallam, out of humility to show that this is something normal, there is nothing wrong. He's married to many wives and this is understandable for the wife to be jealous. So what did he do? He went and helped and picked up the pieces as it came in narrations. And what else? He gave her the Islamic ruling in regards to breaking something else for another person. He said to her, uh, 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 that uh, uh, a plate for a plate or a bowl for a bowl or a utensil for a utensil. One for one. Uh, 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 because this is her right it's, it's, it's not fair you broken something that is owned by somebody else, so you have to give it to them back but he didn't mention that it's wrong he didn't say to her don't be jealous he did, but as well at the same time if this happens yani, don't if, if, if in regards to suspicion now in the terminology of, uh, of, of, of now in our time when it comes to for example phones when it comes to yani, news, uh, that if a liar comes to you with news, that you go and check, you 
go that you check the news. If news came to you or, or a message came to you or there is suspicion, don't confront it straight away until you have evidence and witness. And, 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 and uh, then after that, come to the elders in the family to deal with it. Don't deal with it yourself because then like that's not taken serious and it could cause big fitna. So make sure you go to the, those who are wise and then deal with it through that means and the elders as well through that means. And make sure these elders, for example, uh, yani elders in the community, wise, know what they're doing. Maybe they have experience in marriage counseling, but don't get the family involved in regards to parents, for example. Because once you get the parents involved, obviously each parent is going to be sticking to the side of their family, irregardless to the haq irregardless to the truth who is it with so sometimes you have to be careful except whoever Allah has mercy with so be tolerant and 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 and, and these things are, are anticipated but become patient but at the same time we say to the sisters be careful to extent that it doesn't become extreme and it becomes your your bread and butter that you annoy your husband every day with it but at the same time as well uh, 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 if you think it's an issue, deal with it wisely by going to those who are elder and Allah knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother, uh, brother Daoud, of course, known as Servant of Allah. Uh, uh, mashallah, nice to have you uh, on, on the panel. Uh, any questions uh, or, or queries you want to uh, pose to our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Nasser? Go ahead, okay. brother. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, Brother Muhammad and Sheikh Nasir. Do you guys hear me well? Because I think I have an echo. No, no, perfect. It's better now. At the beginning, there were two, three seconds, but now it's clear, Brother Dawood. Okay, alhamdulillah. Okay, alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Dr. Nasir, um, you just the way you bring something towards um, you explain and just um, subhanallah, it, it just really brings it over, mashallah, so deep, subhanallah. Um, I, I didn't necessarily have a question, but um, maybe to have a, your feedback. Um, on the importance that is um, neglected, I think, um, in parts of the world where um, there is... Uh, so when you get married, um, there's this, there's this um, uh, understanding uh, that the wife and the man basically become one and they become everything for each other but there is there is there is this um this um, lack of or not lack or maybe this priority of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the one who is still the one that you should basically be worshiping and there is this thin line that um people um uh, unfortunately uh, forget uh, when they get married that this it's very important to not only independently um, uh, subhanallah uh, yeah, still have uh, your priorities um, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to um, to like as you said as you mentioned like I find it so important that if you would, if for example, uh, you would be uh, with your wife, and on a daily basis, you would go through the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because there are you can, because it's for both, because uh, his whole life has been depicted, and the the, the women, uh, uh, the, uh, our, our mothers, um, uh, they 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 show examples that that in this time. Uh, no Muslim can't really go against because it is all um, uh, subhanallah uh, the best of examples and um, 
so so do you think like this is something that should be done more often instead of um this um uh, well you, you should be like this or a wife should be like this and a husband should be like this but to 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 really um bond with each other um really by really going in, in through this year of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and 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 deeper into it yeah so inshallah uh, it's it's a quite a long uh, winded kind of statement and a question habibi daud barakallahu fik if you want to like summarize maybe in one sentence uh, we've got five minutes left uh, to end the stream uh, so if you sorry habibi if you want to just like maybe summarize it in a condense it in a in a short uh, sentence uh, that'd be great brother daud inshallah <laughs> Inshallah, no problem. Well, uh, I wanted to, like, I just add that, um, add that comment, um, uh, but also wanted to 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 get the feedback uh, of the Sheikh that that is something that should be um, really taking into importance uh, in in marriages that that lack of together uh, going through the the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and the examples. Uh, than just to focus too too much on um, what is uh, expected from them in the society as a wife and as a husband. Jazakallah khair. Jazakallah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, increase you in in, in knowledge and, 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 and in blessings, you and your family. Barakallah fiq akhi servant of Allah. Uh, it's amazing point uh, that 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 you have mentioned very important. Actually, it is the first point that we will be speaking about, inshallah, next week, uh, in regards to the factors uh, that help and strengthen and build marriage. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, "لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ أَوْ إِسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ." That in the Messenger of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, uh, there is uh, a good example, good role model. In order to know how to run your family Islamically, how, uh, to, towards a happy family like our podcast called, then it has to be through the guidance and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see the ayat in the Quran, may yuti'i Allah wa rasoolah, whoever obeys Allah and his messenger, uh, uh, obeying Allah and obeying His Messenger, yeah, and it is it is factor and foundation in the religion. And if they want a happy marriage, they have to they have to study the seerah. They have to become closer to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala through the seerah. They have to become closer in the marriage. What is the purpose of marriage? Allah says that we created you to worship. So worship is number one. So once you marry, you will feel a home within them. We will speak in regards to the, the point number one from the factors of building up marriage. Taqwiya tu asila bain al abdi wa rabbihi fi zawaj. That strengthening the bond and the relationship between the servant and his lord in regards to marriage. How could marriage help that? The ulama, they, and, and this is the guidance of the Prophet, ﷺ, they say marriage is half of the deen. Why is it half of the Because she will help you with the deen. When you are sleeping and you don't wake up for Fajr, who's going to wake you up? The Allah might not wake you up. You might be tired and this and that. Shaitan could whisper to you. She's the one who wakes you up. Islam gave her permission to sprinkle water on your face. Little bit, not to pour the whole bucket. Huh? I don't want to get phone calls next week. <laughs> <laughs> this is and and the police uh, dealing with many cases of subhanallah of, of sisters pouring water onto their husband whilst they're sleeping. No. But imagine there is a hadith which we'll mention. But inshallah, we could say we could leave it uh, as a cliffhanger, as they say, uh, that the Prophet وسلم, said if a woman wakes up in the middle of the night and she wakes up her husband and, and they pr both pray even as minimum as two rakat, they will be classified, both of them, as Allah kathiran wa Those who remember Allah a lot, male and female. Imagine the khair. So she guides you 
and helps you towards the path of Allah and you help her and guide her towards the path of Allah because both of you, your aim is to please Allah through this marriage. So naham, through the sunnah, through the guidance, through all of that, their foundation and their aim and their goal and their destination is the pleasement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu feek, uh, servant of Allah. This is basically, alhamdulillah, we could say, a jumping point for our topic for next week, inshallah, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability to continue through. Barakallahu feek, barakallahu feek. Jazakallah khairan. Barakallah khairan. Thank you so much. And, uh, uh, looking forward for the next stream, inshallah. May Allah bless us all with more knowledge. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Ameen. Barakallah khairan. Brother Dawood, as-salamu alaykum. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, uh, you know, we have got some bad news. We have to come uh, and end the show. Uh, Barakallah khairan. Uh, another beautiful donation. Uh, the car for my for brother Muhammad and family, Jazakumullah uh, Khair for your donations. And this is Cover FF uh, YouTube channel. It has grown. Uh, the quality of the people is unbelievable. The generosity of the donations is amazing. And Alhamdulillah, you've been with me from day one and uh, expanding this channel. And uh, I really appreciate all of you, brothers and sisters, in your in your donations and becoming members. And as you know. That when I do receive donations, uh, you know, we try to distribute them to various charities. And all of today's uh, um, donations, except the two pound that has been mentioned towards me by name, all these donations will be given to Brother Jordan M for the collection that he's doing for Yemen. So, inshallah, ta'ala, hopefully, I'll, 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 you know, I'll contact Brother Jordan uh, within a couple of weeks and I'll send him uh, the donations and the uh, final. Uh, word from me uh, is basically guys uh, look out for the next episode uh, next week as you can see the five factors to build a marriage so you know we have been uh, speaking regarding the negativity but now there's also uh, a positive uh, side to building a marriage and building the muhabba the love for for your spouse and within the family circle so Sheikh, uh, it's been amazing, mashallah. I can, I can never stop. It's like sometimes sitting at the feet of the scholars, and uh, mashallah, hey, you're, you're so beloved to me, uh, and uh, it's just beautiful, mashallah. Uh, I'd like to thank the brothers and sisters behind the scenes from Stream Islam. Uh, I don't know if they want to be mentioned by name, but uh, you're in my du'as. Thank you so much to Stream Islam, of course, uh, Jordan M. Alhamdulillah, nice to uh, you know uh, share this content on your channel also. Uh, final supplication, Sheikh Nasser. Uh, your supplications are, are beautiful, Sheikh, and it really hit me hard at the beginning when you were speaking about your grandparents. As you know, my grandparents very well. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> Today you reminded me of granddad. May Allah have mercy on him. And widening in his grave and all our grandparents and... Give, give, give him Jannat al firdaus for what he has done for the Muslimin in Coventry and for the Muslimin elsewhere. The granddad of uh, our dear brother Muhammad Abu Shaib uh, Ashraf uh, was a le legendary man, as they say, with, with, with all what the word holds and contains. Uh, 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 one man soldier in reality. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of this in his scale of hasanat. Because he was, uh, he started the seed, subhanAllah. That seed has many branches and that seed has many fruits and that seed has, has touched many people and many houses, uh, subhanAllah, around the world. And, and, and the, the, the wearing of, of, of the, uh, subhanAllah, the, the shimaq and the cloth the, uh, over your head, the scarf, like granddad, uh, subhanAllah, sometimes it, 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 it makes you, uh, subhanAllah, have similar face structure like him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he reunites you with him in Jannah al Firdaus. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reunite us all with our grandparents and parents in Jannah al Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to widen in their grave. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us solace and patience upon the calamity of not seeing them. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us sabr upon meeting them in Jannah al Firdaus. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and them from those who drink from the hawd of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who have the honor of the intercession of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us and them and our families and all of the hearing brothers and sisters and the viewers to make us from those who will be said to them in the Day of Judgment, Udkhuluha bi salam, enter it with peace. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who enter Jannah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us happy with having our first foot in Jannah with our grandparents, with our parents. Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allahu khair. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And finally, I would like to make a specific special dua. For the brothers in, 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 in Stream Islam for bringing it again. Wallahi, we missed this uh, podcast and this episode, alhamdulillah. That could be a sadaqah jariah for us and for them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward every single one of you. And the one who started this, uh, the, the uncle who have passed away, and all of the admins and the brothers that were working here, and they still work in, 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 in uh, uh, Stream Islam and in uh, uh, diversity, uh, Islamic Diversity up north, uh, Islamic Diversity Center. All of the brothers, may Allah reward you all with Janet for those. Bless you all, bless your parents. Make this a sadaqah jariah for you and your family. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you with Janet for those uh, for what you're doing on behalf of the Islam and the Muslimin. Allahumma ameen. May Allah give you success in this dunya and the akhirah and make a smile in your face for us and for you and all our family. Allahumma ameen. خير سبحانك اللهم بحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك